All right, there's a couple of other tools I want to take a look at. You'll notice that here, when you click on the Type tool, we'll also now explore the Vertical Type tool and the Horizontal Type Mask tool as well. Here, the Vertical Type tool is pretty self-explanatory. If I um, come in here and I say Vertical, we can see that that word has been typed out in a vertical fashion. If you want to control the amount of letting on that, you can do so quite simply by affecting it in this way. And that's kind of an interesting effect that you can apply to it, just about any text. And what that allows you to do is to create something in this fashion. And again, of course, you're getting into the realm of creative creativity here. Unless you're working with Asian characters, where this would be very common working with the vertical type you might want to be rotating the elements right so you can say command and you can whoops that's the last thing I want to do um, just come in here and rotating those elements with your command T or control T free transform tool and as you can see now I've got these vertical elements which if I press down on the option or alt key I can make copies of you know and it's really up to you to determine how you're going to be using this kind of work and what you want to be doing with it making it look like rain doing any number of things I'm going to select all of those and delete them and now I want to show you the horizontal type mask tool well it's a lot of different ways that you can do this and work with this and what I want to just show you is that as you can see when you click on it it allows you to create a selection around something so while we don't really have anything that we can make a selection around with the type tool so I'm just going to ask you to open up something if you remember from our previous one we were using a US flag so we can open up this and as you can see here if you don't have your side by side like this you can always come here and just have them side by side and then I'm just gonna drag this into there you'll notice that the flag is huge in comparison to the canvas that I was using just a little bit earlier which just is a simple 800 by 600 canvas nevertheless let's take a look at what we can do here if I select the type tool and I click on this you'll notice that it's created this area here which is acting as a red filter of sorts everything inside the selection is going to be part of my mask and if I come in here you can choose the font that you want by default you're probably gonna have the text set to none but that's not gonna give you a very nice mask effect so I would ask you instead then to set this to something like sharp or crisp or smooth and you could come in here and you can say mask or maybe I'll say stars and you can select that and make them closer together if you wish and the reason I'm using Arial Black is because if you have a thin font this effect is not really gonna come through and in fact I'm gonna open this up quite large and as you can see when you've got that selection made and if it's on top of an area like this well moving that selection is going to wow just change completely what's happening here because you're sort of extracted that element from there so I don't want to do that so we'll press command Z or anything else and at this point if I wanted to I've got a selection and if you remember when you're working with selections what that allows you to do is to click on a quick mask here and notice I've got the stars worked out in this fashion now you might be looking at this and saying hey wait a minute I don't really want to see this portion of the image inside of that mask I actually want to have something else going on here well there's a way that you can do that for example I can unlink the chain that's right here now remember when you have this chain that means you know you select one you select everything but if I unchain this for a second depending on what you've selected for example if I select the mask I'm moving the mask see that if I instead select the image I'm gonna move the image when I click on this as you can see there so you can change stars and you can make it appear over here or wherever you like or if you rather you can click on the mask and move the mask wherever you like and find a more suitable or appropriate element for it 
So I'm going to link these back together and now you can move them together as you can see here. On top of all of this, you can also do a number of things like add perhaps a layer effect to your piece of text. And as you can see, I could come in here and say, hey, well, uh, how about putting a stroke on this thing? And you'll notice even where they're touching, it really does a nice job of not overlapping those elements. The stroke really plays out quite nicely on this. And also, for example, you know, I could come in here and we could choose perhaps a different color. Now that's actually choosing the black or the white of the mask, so that's not really what I want to do. Nevertheless, I could come in here and I'll just eyeball some kind of blue. And for example, you can increase the amount. You can make it so big that it just sort of works in that fashion. Or you can make it just maybe more of a reasonable amount. You can also determine the position of that, remember, inside or outside or right on the center. Well, we'll keep ours outside. I don't mind it being a little round. And do a number of things there. You can also add something like a drop shadow to it. And again, you can play with the size because I've got a little bit of, and more importantly, probably the distance because I've got a little bit of extra space there. So notice, these are all things that you can do either by creating a mask or, as we saw before, it could be a pattern overlay instead. So any of these things that you did want to do to some text can easily be done inside of Photoshop just by accessing either your layer effects, as we see here, or by applying a layer mask to your type as well.